Happy Pi Day, everybody. Why is it Pi Day? 314. 314. So, yay. Uh, my name is Sarah Pauly, and I am a professor of mathematics here at Western. And you came because you want more pie, right? OK. So the first thing you need to do is find a partner. So find a partner. Let's use our heads. Come and get. You might have to share measuring tapes. This is not what the Come on. It's a group activity. Find a partner. I need you to measure the circumference of your heads. And then you're going to have to estimate this a little. Everyone know what circumference means? You need a bigger tape. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, these are. <laughs> um, use the yellow side. They're gone. I'll be partners with you. Measure the circum. What's circumference? What is circumference? All the way around. And what's diameter? Yes, go around. Use the yellow side. One, and write these numbers down and come oh. tell them to me. Okay. Yep. What do you have? Your head than me. Yeah. <laughs> I would have guessed we were about to say. It's for circumference. Is that right? Okay, and now do diameter. That one's going to be a little harder. Oh, yeah, you got to divide it so by two. So diameter, like you could hold your hands up like this and measure in between your hands. All right, hold your hands up. Well, you could figure it out that way. So, the circum what's your circumference? 54. 56.5. Okay. I have no idea. I have, I don't know. I know. I like how I like how accurate you are. <laughs> Wait, what's your diameter? We need circumference and diameter. Did you give her both of ours? Okay. Because she said she needed diameter. Who was the, were you the 57? If you took the diameter and divided by 3.14, you get the, when you get the. And 19? Was 59, 57 on it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. And you were 15? Uh, okay. Yeah. Circumference yeah. and diameter. However you want to, you could go like this. Yeah. What'd you guys get? Have you already not done yet? Like, uh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> okay, you got circumference. Now, five, ooh, that was like interesting. You could go yeah. across like that. I couldn't remember. I can't remember. Okay, what you got? Oh, I do uh, three. Uh, this way? Right. Right. You're going to see. It's your smart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This way? You're going to see. It's your smart. All right, what? How do you measure the point? Well, I, you're going to have to estimate this, right? I would say put your fingers up and measure in between your fingers. It shouldn't matter if it's a real circle, but obviously your head is a perfect sphere. Why is everybody All right. Once you get those. Lucy, you got yours? Okay, yes. yes. what do you got I'm for me? Like a teenager, like, oh, wow. Jenna, the so 52 and 18. Well. No, it's Lucy. It's like actually really small. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you give her so many was Okay, good. what was your diameter, Josh? 14. 14. Steve is 58 and 14. 58 and 14. All right, Austin, what do you got for me? So we got uh, four. Circumferences, yes. 59 and 57. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. And then uh, the diameter is 17 and 18. And 18. All right. No. Sarah, what, yes. are the, what are the units? It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to do a ratio. I don't care oh about units, God. Stephen. Oh I don't care about units. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I am a pure mathematician, and they cancel out anyway, so I don't care. All right, what am I, so what am I going to do with this circumference and diameter information? If you know, what is pi? So you guys told me it was 3.14. What is that? Ah, so pi, everyone knows it's 3.14, but when you ask them... What is it, right? Oh, you guys are a poor sample size, I think. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. We came here to get pie. And oh, get man, salted. what is happening, salted? you people? Oh. Come on. Measure. I think our diameters are messed up. All right, so what should
should we get that's pretty close? We were hoping to get numbers kind of close to pi, right? I did this with my daughter, Anna, and she had 22 circumference and seven across in inches, which 22 sevenths yeah. is a really close it's, approximation it's too easy to, to, to pi. do this kind of thing yes. when you measure it. Yes, so the question is, so pi, right, is the definition of pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle divided by the length of the diameter. So we use our heads, which are circular. Why are we not getting pi? Yeah, our heads aren't really very fully circular. I, what, what I, why else do you think we're not getting pi? Our yeah, our measurements, we weren't probably very consistent with our measurements. It's tough to get that diameter unless we like sliced you open from needed, here. We needed some calipers to go We need some, <laughs> we need calipers. <laughs> That's what we need. But what do you notice? I'm almost five. Which one are you, Lucy? 18. Oh, yeah, 3.167. Yeah, you were probably, less. you were really close. So was the 57, yeah, the 5718. We're all relatively close, right, to around three. And so if you look at that 3.14, we're pretty close to that pi when we take a circumference and a diameter. This is the thing about pi that's so amazing. I just told you to use your heads, right? What else could we use? Any circle. You yep. could take the circumference of the earth divided by its diameter. You could take the circumference of a pen divided by its diameter, and we're going to get pi. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. It, it is. is amazing. Th I, I know. <laughs> okay, I'm so. Not the pie. I know. <laughs> this, we're going to have I'd love Steve explain <laughs> later. <laughs> All right, the myth, the legend, <laughs> pi. Let's talk about it. So pi is the circle, a circle circumference. Any, are we doing Brady's? Yes. What are you getting? So 60 and oh man, 20. Well, I can do that in my head. That's what a master's degree will get you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you 20. go. Is that what we got? Maybe 21. Maybe 21? No, I don't want oh, it to be no. 21. <laughs> Brady, what's going on here? It's the hair. I think the hair is messing up. All right, so that's the definition of pi. It's about 3.14159. We're feeling just fine. 26535. I like this jive. 89793233. I think that's enough for me. <laughs> it's going to go on how far? For eternity. For eternity. So this is an irrational number. So mathematicians, what's the difference between an irrational number and a rational number? Yeah, so things that are rational can be written as fractions, right? Two thirds, one third, 60 twentieths, right? Those you're are so all rational. Ra you're so <laughs> rational, Brady. But an irrational number is something that cannot be written as a fraction, and pi is a very good example of a number that's irrational. And it never ends. So, because it never ends, that means any number combination that you want to find can be found in pi. Let that sink in for a minute. This is a number, right? 3.14, come in, hi. Uh, 3.14159 forever. So any number combination. Namely, what if you wanted to find your birthday in pi? So if you have a phone, you can grab this QR code. Okay, maybe we'll teach some people how to do QR codes. So go to your camera. Hopefully you can point, point it at the QR code and it should come up. And you should be able to enter your birthday and find where your birthday is in the number pi. Do you have an app that will tell us what our mathematician name will be? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, but we should get that, Randy. Sounds like a good one. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to enter my birthday. 7 June 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It might be a little later than that. And my birthday is in at the position 9,230 in the first 1 million digits oh. of pi. So my birthday, I don't, I'm not, is 6,780. And so the number 6,780 is in the 9,230th position of pi. Where is your guys is at? Did it find it? It doesn't go back far enough for me. It does. <laughs> Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> they truncated it. <laughs> <laughs>
And then this chicken is saying, whatever you do, don't talk to that guy. He'll go on forever. And it's pie sitting at the bar. My position is 31,000. Oh, you're pretty far. I think I win, Brady. I don't know what the rules are, Mine but what was your? It wasn't. Well, it's only oh, the it first. Is? Here's the problem. What's the problem? They it's only the first sequential. million. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so it's sequential, and it's only the first million. So you must come after that first million. Did you put it in like European way? That's it. <laughs> oh. You way know, you're but one Lucy, of the million, Lucy, in Ukraine, how do you do your dates? You do day first. So you have no pie day in Ukraine. No. Position is 9,000. That's so sad. 169. Oh, you, you, you? Want be, you want me to be her. <laughs> Did you guys find your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. You might yeah? Be her. All right. A little bit of history about pie. It's been known for a really, really long time. For almost 4,000 years, there's a reference to it in the Bible. Also, when they're talking about some measurements, they say it's around three. So it's been known for a really, really long time, this ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. The Babylonians, between nine, this was in the 1900 to 1680 BC, they would calculate the area of a circle by taking three times the radius of its square. So you guys remember, what is the area of a circle? Pi r squared. Pi r squared, oh, there's pi. So they would take three times the radius squared, okay? So they estimated pi to be about three, and then they also got a little bit more precise and got it to be around 3.125. The Egyptians calculated pi to be around 3.1605, which is pretty amazing considering they didn't have trigonometry, they didn't have some of that geometry that we had, they, don't have, they didn't have a lot of the tools that we have in modern mathematics to calculate these things. Did you read that cartoon? Heart, it's not pi day, it's pi day, not pi day. I don't understand what you're trying to say. And then the, the tongue says, stay out of this brain or I will destroy you. <laughs> All right, so how did we get a better approximation of pi? Archimedes in 287 to 212 BC and Zhu Shangzi in 429 to 501 BC, they used the method of inscribing polygons and circles. So if we look at the, this was the first theoretical measurements of pi. Here's what Archimedes did. He took two polygons. He took a polygon that was inscribed in the circle, and then he took a polygon that was um, circumscribed in the perimeter, in the circle. And what, how do you think he used that to find pi? Remember, what is pi? The measurement of the circumference, right, by the diameter. What is the problem with measuring the circumference of a circle way back then? It's a little difficult. We don't have the tools. We knew how to, they knew maybe how to measure straight lines, right? We could do that. But it's something that is curved like a circle, right? They didn't have that technology or that ability to measure that. They didn't have so one of these. That, yeah. We just said, well, you could. That's true, Carlton. You could put that around and then take it out and measure it. So a six-sided polygon, Archimedes would just find the perimeter of that polygon, right? And then do the perimeter of the one outside and, get, and know that the circumference of that circle would lie between those two perimeters. So, oh, Jan, you're going to have like flashbacks to Calc 2. How could we do better, right? More angles. <laughs> How could we make it better, a better approximation? That was only a six-sided polygon. Let's do a 12-sided polygon. Why would that help? Get more accurate that way. Yeah, we have yeah, less error be, there, right? If you notice, the, the error here, you can see quite a bit of error between these. But here, that error is a little less. What about a 24-sided? Less. And then a 48-sided, OK? Archimedes did OK. He, he um, saw that I was between 3 and 10 71st and 3 and 1 7. So will someone find, what is 3 and 10 71st for me? Did you bring your calculators? <sighs> you did. It's on your phone. <laughs> 3.135. All right, 3.135. And then what is 3 and 1 seventh? Is that what? 3.1428. 3.1428. Remember, pi is, is that right? 3.14159, right, is pi. He got very, very close. Oh, 
So when did they? When did they fail. When did they figure it out the right way? Or, oh, sure. oh, that's the next one. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> one four zero eight. One four zero eight. Brady. I always want to go one. No step pie for you, Brady. <laughs> wow. So even better. Oh, whoa. Hold on. But Shang Zi did what got the extra credit. He inscribed a twenty-four thousand five hundred and seventy-six adon. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, do you have a hobby? Could we maybe interest you in running or something? But actually, you know, what is, um, Brady, what's 355 divided by 113? 355 No, I'm telling you. 3.1415929. That is really, really, really close. All right. So, a little bit more history of pi. The symbol for pi was widely used by William Jones. He was Isaac Newton's pal in 1706. Okay, before that, people would just say it's the quantity which, when the diameter is multiplied by it, yields the circumference. I shall now on call pi that. This is not pi day. It is the quantity which, when the diameter is multiplied by it, yields the circumference day. Yes? <laughs> and then popularized by Euler. So Euler was a really famous mathematician that did a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Um, Foxtrot comic, what are you geeks doing having a math showdown? We challenged each other to recite pi backwards. Whoever goes first loses. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? Come on, guys, that's funny. Because it's infinite. And then, yes, he says, no, I think whoever enters this room loses. <laughs> I'm so infinitely not close to going. Ha, huh? I'm infinity plus one, not close. Sir, I thought you were going to say William Jones was a pseudonym for Isaac Newton. Oh, no. You were going to, like, blow my mind. I'm like, <laughs> I should have told you that, Steve. You didn't know that, Steve? Come on. All right, so... Um, Carlton, you asked how do we calculate actually, how do we actually calculate pi, right? So if we go to a little bit of calculus two, we can see we have some definitions for pi for exactness. Now what is the problem with this? See those dot, dot, dots? What does that mean? Just continues it just on. continues, continues on, right? on forever, right? So we can get closer and closer to pi. We'll never reach it though because it's irrational, right? We can never actually find pi. Can we get really, really close to it? Yeah, I mean, what is close? I was reading that actually you only need like nine decimal places to get a, like to have an error that's tiny. Even when you're measuring the circumference of the Earth, you only need about nine decimal places to get a really good approximation. But um, this is a series from Calc 2. If you take this series representation for tangent inverse and then put one in, we get that pi divided by four so about a fourth of pi is equal to, this is what we call series in mathematics. One minus one third plus one fifth minus one seventh plus one ninth. Isn't that beautiful? You guys. <laughs> I don't know if I actually. It's just, it's just like, <laughs> you know, like this beauty of our world that really shows in these numbers that are really, really important. Um, so that's one of them. I'm glad Dragon's here because he can probably talk about this more than I can. This is a... Uh, Probability problem with Buffon's needle. No, it's okay. Janice, like, I'm in statistics now. I don't. Um, <laughs> so, Buffon's needles, if you take um, two, we, I almost did this, but I didn't think we have time, which we don't. If you take two toothpicks and you make a line, so your width is two toothpicks, you make a line and then you drop the toothpicks randomly, okay? Pi will equal two times. So the length of the toothpick divided by the distance between the lines, okay? So in this case, those lengths would cancel out, right? And the two would cancel with this. That's why we do two toothpicks. You don't have to do that unit. If you do that, then if you take the total number of your tossed toothpicks and you divide it by the number of lines of the line crossing toothpicks. So any toothpick that crosses one of those lines, right, you're gonna count in your denominator and you will get pi. Isn't that crazy? I don't know why. <laughs> you get pi. <laughs> Ask Dragon. Dr. Skropanik. <laughs> and now Dragon will prove it for you. <laughs> Yay, Dragon! <laughs> uh, but this is a pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, why? I mean, there, you, could, you could probably. You, 
Yeah, I left out. <laughs> Prove this at home. Where do you go? Um, in 2019, we had the, a Google employee in Japan, I believe, calculated pi to 31 trillion decimal places. Is it needed? No. Right? It's not, right? Only about nine decimal places would provide us with a really good approximation of whatever we're doing with a small error. If we're talking about area or if we're trying to find circumference or find diameter. But um, computers are doing it. Now, this was a computer. It wasn't an actual person. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah, quite <laughs> calculating that. I did it. No, I'm just kidding. It was not me. And then um, the record for reciting pi was in 2015. Uh, this person, I'm not going to butcher their name, uh, recited pi to 70,000 decimal places, and it took them 10 hours to do it. So, what book? are y'all going on this weekend, Brady? Come on. <laughs> 71,000. Let's do it. Come on, Brady. Well, I was just going to say, okay, 70,000 one. Um, I don't know if we have time for the pi song. Do you guys want the pi yes. song? Yes. Um, and I did not test the, I am not being a good presenter. I did not test. Oh, I got that stuff too. How do you fix that? Ah, uh, yeah. Never mind. We won't. I'll, I'll show it to you. We'll do it here in a minute. How do you fix that, Sarah? I don't know, Carlton. I'm a mathematician, <laughs> not an IT person. I'm sure we can figure it out. <laughs> I'll try and figure it out while you guys get some pie. But can I tell you about the best part? Can I just? I took that picture. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you why the world is ruled by mathematics. Wow. On Sunday, was I, that was yesterday. I was in <laughs> Logan and I went to Smith's to buy pies for you guys. And this is what I found. They were selling pies three dollars and fourteen cents and I went to the Smiths here and they were not so now I will do all my shopping in Logan it's gonna <laughs> I will be going to Logan all right